Hello, Akron fans, and welcome back to the Akron 2012 Christmas Tournament Casts. I am Shredder 33 your host, and this is day three of the casts. Day one and two are currently on Twitch, and day two should be on YouTube as well. So, today we're going to be going over some of the last few matches along the... Well, both the loser's bracket and the final few matches of the winner's bracket. So, first game is going to be Ferreter versus Kron Aberrant. That's Group I. Then we'll also be going over some of the Vermines games, and the actual ordering won't exactly be obvious. It's not going from left to right, it's going in the order of the games played. So we may not be covering all of the losers bracket in a nice clean order, but we will cover everything ultimately. So let's move on now to Ferreter versus Cronaverant on Tomb of Heroes, in fact. So this is another map we haven't seen a huge amount of in this particular tournament. Hills has been the most popular, but Tomb of Heroes is a good map to see. So for anyone who's not familiar, I will go over it after describing what the players are doing. So Crown Amber get sorry, Ferreter going for Grecum and getting everything set up. His Arctic is moving forward to tank. Crown Amber as well, moving his Arctic to tank. Both players pausing for their starts, so now I can go over the map. So you can see the main bases are on the east and west center. Looks like Crown Amber is going for a standard economy. Ferreter is also... Okay, so... Fair to just worry about lag. Not worried about that, I don't care. What I do care about is the layout of the map. So, like I said, main bases on the east and west center. There is a lucrative center expansion with four crates of each. To the north, there are also some fairly large expansions and one big expansion that can only be accessed by transports or flying RPs or teleporting RPs. Then there are expansions all along the south, a big line of expansions along the south with small amounts of crates in each one. And Crime are getting... Okay, he's definitely going for hev heavily for economy. This is not surprising. Tomb of Heroes is a large enough map that all-ins aren't that big of a deal. You don't have to worry about them too much. So both players will just be setting up their economies and working from there. Probably getting f a couple reefs early on and then maybe going for quick tech. Probably grabbing an octopod just in case their opponent does go for an all-in rush. Which in neither case, no player is going for an all-in rush. So... If both players realize this, they might just end up going for quick reefs, quick air units, and then building up from there. But we will see that in a moment. So Ferreter actually sending out an Octo Scout, double checking the north, making sure that Cronaveron hasn't tried to proxy there. And then we'll see that Cronaveron is going for economy. No shenanigans, no all-in rushes or anything like that. And Ferreter is not building up much himself. He doesn't have a lot of well, he has enough resources to build another RP, but he's not doing so. Focus too heavily on this Octo, but likely we'll take care of that later on. Actually, looks like he's echoing that out completely. He didn't even get to Crown Aberrant's base. Perhaps he was only worried about this particular North expansion. He wasn't concerned about Crown Aberrant's main base, and assuming he didn't see that, he doesn't really care because he did move that back. Went to went to QPRP and echoed out the Octo completely. Doesn't look like he actually watched where it ended up. Anyway, Cronamert is going for a very quick reef, and Faraday looks like he is planning for a very quick octopod. Thus, this year. Oh no, the green time does actually carry it along. Let's see. Yeah, the octo. Oh, sorry. So Faraday does have his octo reach Cronamert's base along the green time move. The red time move will echo it out. But this octo is going to be scouting out what's going on. So Cronamert does actually see it. Does run a well. Does see it does see that it is not a particularly strong attack. I mean, it's just a scout, really. It's not going to deal too much damage. But getting a very quick reef, and looks like he's assuming correctly that Ferreter has echoed out this attack. Which he has, like I said, this is the Octo in question. Is that resource processor right there? And now Ferreter just double checking, seeing what Cronamorant actually has in his base, and now that he sees that it's just a standard reef and triad, he's likely to not even worry about in the Octobot, actually. He might even just go... He might keep this on QP just to have faster tech. But no, he is worried about the Octobot. He's still going for that. He doesn't see anything to suggest that he needs one, but perhaps he is still feeling somewhat paranoid. Not terribly unwise. It's a li might be a little bit costly, given that he could just go for air units and... Well, Spire, Van Structure's air unit tech from there, and really push forward in the tech, because he can go for this. But no, he's going straight for Octopod and using that as defense. So he will have a good defense. That is that is a thing to note. He will have 
quite solid defense for anything that Cronaber can throw at him for the next couple minutes or so. And Cronaber now trying to get his QP up so he can start building up tech as well. And Ferreter actually, hmm, Ferreter interestingly going for some harassment assaults. He's sending out that Octopod and Octo around, double checking expansions, making sure that Cronaber isn't trying to do anything tricky. Getting quick expansions and really building himself up, which is not a bad idea. Cronaber is not doing this, however, and he really doesn't have enough money to do so. But if he was doing that, then be a perfect counter. Cronaber, however, is really just patrolling his base, making sure nothing goes into his main base, which is all he has to worry about. There's nothing in the expansions to worry about. While Ferreter looks like he's... Has, he's got his Reef. He has actually getting a bubble wrap, and he will be from there getting advanced structures very soon, I'm sure. Though he needs another RP on QP in order to support that. Well, Cronaber... Also getting standard bubble wrap. I'm not sure when he's going to get advanced structures since he does have a fair amount of Q plasma. Getting himself a defensive octopod as well. So both players really focus on the octopods. Not sure if they're considering the size of the map that kind of makes all in rushes useless. But since both players are going, for, I mean, since Ferret is going for octopod, Cronaber probably should too, just in case he gets attacked, just to have that stronger defense. But. That's a real metagame. That's a real metagame play right there. There's... That's really just guessing what your opponent will do based on knowing that the metagame is heavily favoring Octopods right now. Because on smaller maps, they're needed to defend against all-in rushes. And where is Ferreter's Octopod? Ferreter... Ah, his Octopod, he's a minute down from Crown Aberrant. And his Octopod looks like it is getting ready to attack, actually. I'm not sure if he's trying to intercept any expansion attempts. Or probably just waiting for the unplayable past edge and then attacking from there so that Crown Aberrant can't do anything about that, which I honestly would not recommend. Given that Crown Aberrant has Octopods and Octo Defense, along with Reefs and everything, Crown Aberrant will win any engagement even if it's in the unplayable past. Even if Crown Aberrant can't do anything about it, he will still win. He has the unit advantage and the Reef advantage. And Crown Aberrant is actually getting himself advanced structures. He has one QPRP, five LCRPs, could could get heavy pods decently quickly, but it's going to be kind of tricky to do. He's probably getting advanced structures a bit too soon for the amount of QPRPs he has. He needs one more at least. Maybe two if he wants to go heavily for Pharopods. While Ferreter is also getting advanced structures, and he is in much better position to build air units quickly. So I think Ferreter is going to be able to win any early engagements, getting heavy pods early, likely. He can also get a Pharopod fairly early, though Crown Emmer will have an easier time getting a heavy pod than a Pharopod with the resources he has. And he's... well, he still needs to get a Spire, he needs to get a Faro for that. But he's not doing so. Jumping towards the present, interestingly. Probably probably taking my advice and macroing in the present. No, jumping back to the 517 mark, double checking advanced structures, likely to get a Faro afterwards, and then from there get a Spire. I don't see a Faro, though, I just see Seppies. A little bit odd, that. He is going for his Bubble Wrap, and... Three reefs is usually what he goes for. If he's going for more than that, I'd be quite surprised. And there's Ferreter Spire at the 557 mark. Whereas Crown Aberrant at the 540 mark, he has advanced structures completed. He is not... He is building a Faro for the Spire. So it looks like both players will have a Spire at about the same time. But like I said, Ferreter has a better economic base for actually supporting air units. Crown Aberrant will be able to get out one heavy pod fairly quickly, but Ferreter will be able to build just a larger army in general. And... Oh, okay, interesting. Cronaberrant appears to be going for a raid with a triad of units and an octopod. A base class triad and an octopod, which is a little bit surprising. Especially on a map like this. I'm not sure if he's probably not aware of Ferreter's octopod and octo here, except, well, it would be now. They went for the edge attack. And here it is. The edge attack, like I said, dealing a decent amount of damage, but not ultimately going to be able to do that much. The octopod that Ferreter sent in getting destroyed in a hurry, so really not that useful of an attack. Like I said, there was no way that Ferreter could have won that engagement. But with Cron Aberrant, double checking that, I'm not sure if he's... He might be getting psyched out by the attack, I'm not sure. Probably won't be given that he's able to heal up no problem, but it might still have a bit of a psychological effect on him. It might cause him to be a bit more cautious to avoid going for a raid. However, it looks like he is continuing on with his raid right next to the main base, not really worrying about that at all. So Ferreter's attack had no effect. Ferreter is building a semi-pod, though. 
and he can easily build another very soon. So like I said, Ferreter in a good position. No, he's getting another QP. He's going for Pharopods. Ferreter is definitely getting another Pharop like Pharopod up with the Sepipod. And that should work out very well. Even with Cronhammer getting more RPs, he's going to be late when it comes to getting air units. So right now, Ferreter has quite an advantage. Certainly has a timing advantage. If he gets a Pharopod up and eliminates these forces down here, he should be able to take out everything that Cronhammer has. Now, Cron Aberrant, on the other hand, he does have... Well, no, he has the same amount of bubble wrap as Ferreter does. So both players are as defensive in their main bases, but Ferreter having the early air units is going to be a bit of an advantage. Cron Aberrant, however, moving in. The 750 mark, he's moving in, building up a reef for support for this attack, going with an Octopod and an Octo, which really Ferreter will probably see in time. And, oh, interesting, a Dome Rush. have not seen one of those in a long time. I mean, admittedly, Shao could use that in his match against Electro, but... Still, having seeing a Dome Rush is pretty surprising. It's kind of neat, actually. And here comes the Sebi Pod. No Pharopod support, though, which is really bad timing. He needs that Pharopod to support. Ferret must move that Sebi Pod back. The Pharopod is the only way he's going to be able to get rid of those units from the air. Obviously, a cloaked Pharopod. I shouldn't have to point out. And Crown Amber not even going for air yet. He has the Spire. He has enough resources for a Sebi Pod, but not enough for a Pharopod. At this point... Ferreter could build a Pharopod. I don't think he is. No, he does not have... Well, he has one build action in the future, but... Relative future, I should say. And it is a Pharopod. Okay, good. He is going for a Pharopod, which means he should be able to hold this off. But it's still going to be tough, even with Reef support. And it looks like Cryamarin's Reef did not get... Did he not build it properly? No, he's going with Progen Mode in the Sepi, but he's not building a Reef there. He probably will go back to fix that. And here comes the Sepi Pod for Cron Aberrant at the 842 mark. Both players are in sync at this point in time. And as I say that, Cron Aberrant jumps away. But Ferreter is still focused here. He is going to be... Well, this is Pharopod. He could easily use that start attacking. Cron Aberrant, on the other hand, at the edge of the unplayable past. He has the Sepi Pod up. Has a Reef up, so he does have a Reef this time around. But it looks like Ferreter is not going forward with the attack yet. It really is going to be up to this Octopod coming in and attacking. And it looks like... Here we go. Here's that Pharopod I mentioned. Dealing quite a bit of damage, but... Well, right now, Cloaking would be useless. Having both Pharopod and Sepipod attacking this could help. But now he's getting rid of that Octopod. Regardless, that Octopod... No, will not die! No, Ferreter, go back! Use the Sepipod for support! It needs to have support. He is sort of retreating the Pharopod and getting that out of there. But this is going to be very difficult for... For Ferreter to get out of. Cryamon has completely contained him. Although... I should say, almost completely contained. And Ferreter moving to the north base with his Arcticus and likely to build, start building up a duo right up here to get more RPs. Very clever plan, but I think it might not be timed out the best because he does have... He does have an expansion duo moving towards the south. But given the position he's in, it's going to be tough for him to secure his main base while doing this. Cronaverin's been completely contained, and spending the resources he's going to need to in order to build this is going to be difficult. Cronaverin has legal class, by the way, and, well, he's researching it at the 949 mark, but he will have it fairly soon. All he needs, really, is to get this Sepipod down. He gets Faro Lego from there and just bomb out this entire base. Probably will get a Faropod from there and build a Sepi Lego, though. That's most commonly what is used, and a second Sepipod coming in for support, so maybe he's going to go for Faro Lego as a Sepipod support. That would be interesting. I've never, I haven't actually seen a player really do that. It'd be very rare. Sepi Legos are the most popular Lego class unit at this range. Octa Legos are sometimes used, but Far Legos have never really been used. So it would be very interesting to see if that is used. But frankly, I kind of doubt it. I like, I'd like to see it though. That'd be cool. I think it'd be neat if that came up. Anyhow, Ferreter, his north base is being developed somewhat. Cranamer is in the unplayable pass, double-checking the attacks that happened here. Can't really do anything about them, but he can see what happened. So ultimately, it looks like Ferreter lost his Sepipod, trying futilely to attack this blockade in his... or really, the siege. However, moving his Sepipod around, his, he is able to start harassing some expansions that Cranamer had. Which is a good idea, really. That's all he can do right now, is try to expand himself. I mean, he has cleverly moved out without being noticed. But he's not... Oh, yeah, okay, he is starting to build up with that. Good. So, Ferreter will have nice hidden expansions. He has a hidden duo here. He has the hidden duo up in the north, which I don't think Cronhammer suspects at all. Certainly hasn't checked for it. However, this has been a rather expensive exercise, so it's still going to take a few minutes to pay for itself. 
That being said, Cryomon has not really... Has not attacked the main base and is in fact losing his siege. Ferrer attacking at just the perfect time to get rid of that dome. The reef is still there for support, but that dome is gone. So it's going to be one fewer... One fewer antagonizing force here. However, losing his far pods in the process is going to be very painful. I think Ferret is going to start retreating this slightly. Still, he did get rid of that dome, which is pretty huge. If he can move that far pod back before it dies, he might be able... No, it looks like he's not going to have much of a chance. Ah, he does! He does save the far pod. Not sure he's going to be able to kill the Octopod. Probably not, but he can... At least say he got rid of that dome. If he can get rid of the reef from a distance, then he'll be in a great spot, because that reef doesn't have any other support for its own healing. His north expansion, still undetected. Kron Emberant has not shown any suspicion about that. And Kron Emberant, also not knowing about this southeast duo here. So Kron Emberant not himself expanding out very much. His main base is his only center of operations for production. So Ferreter much better spread out. Really taking advantage of Grekum's ability to kind of spread like a virus. And here are the Octoligos. So he was not going for Farligos at all. He was going for Octoligos instead. And this... This is going to be scary. Octoligos this close to your main base really nullifies the only disadvantage of Octoligos, which is their low speed. However, getting rid of one of them, and yes, Ferreter really can sacrifice a Farapod to do this. That was the right move. He should not retreat those Farapods. Getting rid of the Octoligos is paramount. That's a huge amount of money that Cronhammer just wasted on those Octoligos. It's about 300, 200 roughly. 300 LC, 200 QP, that just went down. But no, he should not retreat the Farapods. The Farapods can die to get rid of the Octoligos. They should die to get rid of the Octoligos, because these Octoligos need to die as soon as possible. Okay, maybe they shouldn't die if they don't have to, but... Dying to get rid of Octoligos is not a problem. If that happens, that's fine. It is still paid for itself. Like, it, that is worth it. Now, dying to get rid of an, a fellow Farapod, not so worth it. Ferreter getting advanced... Okay, Ferreter's getting weaponry, and I do not agree with this choice. I really don't. He is, his base is under very heavy attack. He needs to get more units. He needs to get Sepipods, basically. Either a ton of Sepis or a ton of Sepipods, or both. He is getting Sepis, which is good, but not enough. Nowhere near enough to deal with this. And this is going to be a problem. Now, Sepipods going to progen mode, getting more Octoligos up. Now, Cronhammer and his expansion attempts have clearly given him enough resources to use this quite nicely to get up more Octoligos and so forth. Pulling up three Octoligos. Now, the only defensive forces here that aren't in progen mode will be destroyed pretty soon. The city is going, city pod's going down pretty quickly, and the far pod going down quickly as well. However, the city pod in progen mode is protecting out, it is protecting the Octoligos, and the Octoligos need to die. That is the high priority target. Another Octopod coming up to try to deal with them, but those three Octoligos, if they get up, Ferreter has lost the game. Or very close to. He still has an expansion in the north. He still has a try duo to the southeast. But it's going to be extremely difficult. And they are up! Ferreter has lost his main base. That is how powerful Octoligos are. Ferreter has lost his main base. Like, seriously, it'll be about 30 seconds before Zarticus go down, goes down, and then everything else will go down very soon after. So, unless Ferreter can find a way. Getting chronoporting, actually. Not a bad idea. He's getting chronoporting in the future, trying to dodge the time wave and. It will be a paradox, but he might be able to pull it off. Because, like I said, these Octoligos will eliminate everything in this base. Even with the three reefs, it's not going to be enough. I should, I should say, 30 seconds for one of them, so 10 seconds for individuals. And, unfortunately for Cronenberg, one of the Octoligos is not in position to attack. But, still, even the two that are attacking are dealing more than enough damage. Just getting rid of everything. J Ferreter trying to do what he can, but he does not have the forces to deal with this. Even in the north and southeast. So, nice Octoligo play by Kron Aberrant. Nice use of the proxy there with the legal class. And of course, right now, Ferreter basically not getting Chronoporting. He actually he could get Chronoporting, but I think his reefs would not survive long enough. Honestly, I don't see that happening. He is over trying using. Probably the worst reef to do it on. This would have been the best reef. It would have lasted the longest. But this one in the north is going to go down well before Chrono Party is even halfway done. And even with the distracting Octopod, that Chrono Porting research will not be completed. This reef would have been a bit more useful to use. But even then, it's going to be very difficult to work with. Another reef... Now, this reef here, that would have been the reef to use. If you'd waited for that reef to be done, and then built up from there... 
but the way he's ended up, this is not going to work. Ferritor trying to escape from his main base where he can, having already set up causally independent triads, had at least bought him some time, and he is getting weaponry. Once again, I do not agree with this choice. Chrono Chronoporting would have been a slightly better choice, but really, just more units. Like, it's kind of hard to overwhelm Octoligos, but they don't have speed, so we could at least raid around, since... Basically, almost all of Cronhammer's offensive capability and resources have been invested into these three Octoligos. And while there is some investment in Chronoporting and his main base, the Octoligos are way too far away from the main base to actually deal with them. Except maybe with Chronoporting, but the Octoligos are still slow, they can still be avoided, you can still attack around them. They aren't in the main base, so getting through them for destroying Cronhammer's main base could at least work. But it looks like Ferritor is not planning on doing that unless he's planning on nuking the main base, which is the only thing I can think of. And he does not have the Q Plasma to do this. Now, Chronot, on the other hand, has, definitely has the Q Plasma to Chronoport quite well. Having taken the center as well, he's taken most of the left side of the map, moving towards the north as well, floating. Okay. Did Chronot just. Chronot just Chronoported. Just getting Chronoporting. Chronoporting back his Octoligos to get rid of everything that was here before. Just that much faster. So now Ferrer has. No chance at all. His main base is completely gone. However, this north base, having not been found out, could still save him. It's a little bit hard, but might be able to save him. If he hadn't gone for weaponry, at least. That's that's a lot of resources. That's 200 LC and 160 QP. That could have been like three or four Pharopods. Well, actually, no. Not three or four Pharopods, but two or three Pharopods and a Sebi Pod, just for the support. And it looks like... Well, Ferreter is paying attention to... The chronoported units, and yeah, Octolio is working alongside himself just to finish off that main base faster. There is nothing really fair to can do to save his main base, but he still has a base. He is not out of the game yet. He might be able to deal with this. It's just we'll have to see. So another far coming up for Aspire, and then from here probably going to build up units. And it looks like Ferrer has undone weaponry research, which is good. He did not need weaponry, and really should not have had it. He needs units. He needs many units, he needs... Actually, it wasn't undone intentionally. It looks like he just ran out of cash. But he still needs air units more than anything else right now. I'm gonna get himself off this island and try to get rid of the Octoligos. However, with Chronoporting, this means that this Sepipod... Chronomer is scouting around with the Sepipod. This one right here, actually. He will find it eventually. This duo is the only safe duo right now. And Ferritor is not investing at all in them. Which means this Sevipod, as soon as it finds that north base, which seems inevitable, though Chronomer doesn't seem to be looking there too, too heavily, this Pharopod will find it, actually, within the next minute or so. This Pharopod will be finding it, and that will be the end for Ferritor. If, if he gets a couple Sevipods up, he might have a chance. But the Chronoported Pharopods are going to be just too much, I think. Chronomer will find it, he will then jump back near the Unplayable Past Edge, Chronoport back the Pharopod and finish off this base here. There will be no defense that Ferritor can mount. Ferritor, however, also getting a Pharopod. Why is he getting a Pharopod? Sepipods would be a much better idea at this point, but Ferritor instead going for a Pharopod. And... Yeah, Chronomer is getting... Once he finds this, we will see the end of the game. Unless Ferritor invests in this southeast expansion, but right now Chronomer not really focused on these Octoligos, surprisingly enough. Not moving them around at all, not getting them out of the main base into more useful territory. And a Pharopod coming in to try to harass, but pretty much giving away the north expansion, which Chronomer is just now finding. So doing what he can to harass, but really that's not what he needs to do. What he needs to do is build up a large enough army to just sweep out while also securing this base and maybe investing in this southeast expansion as well to at least keep Chronomer busy. So he has some causally independent triads, but it doesn't look like that's what's happening. So Crown Amaranth, surprisingly enough, not... Is he not retra... He's not changing his orders. No, he is not changing his orders. He's still attacking that base when he normally did. Not sure if he's aware of when it attacks. He's focused more on this Pharopod here. He does see this base, and now he's going to Chronoport this Pharopod back to deal with it further in the past. But Ferret, on the other hand, dealing some damage to Cramer's main... Well, dealing no damage to Cramer's main base. Trying to deal some damage, but really it's not enough. The Reefs are healing up way too quickly. And... Where is Cramer? Why is he in the present? Why is he not in the Unplayable Past with... Cronoport Pharopods helping out in this base? Unless that's what he's doing now, which is the only thing that comes to mind. But really, Cramer has so many resources in the bank, he's... 
I'm surprised he's not building so much. He is not building enough for the resources he has, by the way. He's he really could be building Sepi Legos and Far Legos and so forth. He is at a great advantage right now. But this Farpod here, able to detect it, able to detect the opposition's Farpod, is gonna be able to get rid of it. Chronoport has not actually has chronoported it back, sorry, he has definitely chronoported it back. So he's gonna deal quite a bit of damage in the unplayable pass, but. Will it be enough to actually get rid of what Ferritor has? We'll find out soon enough. And Ferritor's Farpod, like I said, dealing no damage here. The old position was better too, because it actually was damaging the reef before. But now it is not really doing too much. And here, this Farpod actually is getting rid of all the resource processors, so Ferritor is going to have probably no... This Farpod probably will not exist, probably won't be afforded. And another Sepipod coming in. Chronomart likely to Chronoport this Sepipod back as well. Though I don't see him... No, he's not doing that yet. But he probably will. Ferritor doing what he can to damage these RPs in the past, but... not in the... Yes, he is in the past. This is Chronomart's point of view at the 22-minute mark near the unplayable past edge. And this Farpod doing what it can to get rid of these... Cra or get rid of these RPs. While... As you can see, Cronabrit is dealing a ton of damage. Now, Cronabrit, like I said, he is, he did Cronabrit back to Sepipod to deal even more damage to Ferritor's base. So Ferritor looks like he's going to lose everything. His only hope is the Southeast duo, which he is still not using. I don't know if he's forgotten about that, or if he's just decided not to spend much money on it. However, this Sepipod here doing what it can. This is too far in the future, however, this... Wait. Is it too far in the future? Hmm. No, it looks like... Ferritor has, in fact, gone chronoporting. Chronoporting back a couple Seppies. Trying to do what it can to get out of this, but no, it's not going to be enough. He has lost all of his RPs in the past and has surrendered. So, well done to Chron Aberrant. That was a very interesting game. I'm I'm very glad to see this North expansion used, even though it does kind of give a bit of a Grekum advantage, but I'm very glad to see this North expansion used because it it's just cool to see used. I like, I like the fact that I can show off this little statue here. Anyway... So that was the game here, and congratulations to Cron Aberrant for winning. So Cron Aberrant will be fighting against Rock Mox, and that is actually the next game we'll be going over. So be back in a moment, just don't go away.